Violet Knight has a number of good stories behind it. But of course, unlike those wonderful stories we've heard from John, we can't now hear them from the people who actually were there at the time. But it's one of the features of the fascinating histories of the carols that have come to be part of our repertoire, that they've attracted all these stories around them and lots of different versions, lots of different translations, lots of different versions of tunes, so that the tradition, to quite a large extent, becomes one of a, an original which may or may not have appeared somewhere, you know, somebody may or may not have written it originally, um, which has then gone through many, many different hands, lots of editors, people adding different verses, translating it, arranging it, and then sort of coming up in a, in, in a sort of form that we're familiar with today. But Silent Night is one of those where we do know uh, who wrote it. Um, the melody, as is well known, was by um, an Austrian schoolmaster and organist in the beginning of the 19th century called Franz Zever Gruber. And the words were by um, a Catholic priest who he knew called uh, Joseph Moore, M-O-H-R, Moore. Um, but it's, uh, and it was written for um, a celebration in his local parish church, um, became popular in America later in the 19th century, had verses added to it, had different translations, did lots of stories around it, one of which was that it was originally written because the organ had been nibbled by rats. Um, so the, they had to come up with a piece with a, an accompaniment for guitar, uh, which doesn't have any uh, factual basis. And another one which then made it into print early in the 20th century was that the author of the words, Joseph Moore, wrote the carol out of sadness because he had been widowed on Christmas Eve and had to help comfort his uh, motherless children which is a lovely story, but of course completely ignores the fact that uh, Moore was a Catholic priest um, and therefore had neither wife nor children. But it's all part of the wonderful uh, history of this, uh, th these traditions, that, that these stories and these... Uh, they, 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 it's, it's like an oral tradition, you know, these hymns, get, they get filtered through performance, through publication, through all the different kinds of hymn book and the kind of approach to churchmanship and hymn singing um, which different countries and different ages tend to favour different kinds of arrangements so that in the end you there becomes no such thing as a, as an, a, a sort of genuine original at least in many cases uh, in some there are but in many there are not. So it wasn't actually so that that legend that it was um, written for guitar is not actually true. Well, I think the bit that he wrote it for guitar because he turned up at the church and found that mice had nibbled through the um, the, the organ pipes. I don't think that bit has any basis. In fact, uh, I mean it is the original manuscript can be seen. Um, now I'm just seeing if I can find it to see whether it's got a guitar part. Um, I'd have to check <laughs> to check that one. Um, but you know, he was a practical parish church musician, as I'm sure most of the people on this um, call will know that you have to be adaptable and you have to be prepared to perform your, your music uh, for whatever forces there are. He certainly published it in a version for four part choir and then in the familiar version for two upper voices as well. And I imagine he would have been perfectly content to play the accompaniment on whatever he had to hand, just like we all. Yes. I'm sure. And I must say that, you know, we've certainly had to be uh, adaptable as musicians over the last few months, haven't we? Of course, um, there is um, well, that... some doubt, Andrew, isn't there, about what the original manuscript actually is, because as Silent Night became famous um, throughout that part of the German speaking world, visitors would come to the church and he was a very obliging sort of good natured man and he would write it out specially for the visitor, said, oh, here it is. It was not published for quite a number of years. Um, and so there are actually many manuscripts in his hand. 
And it may well be the case that some have organ accompaniment, some have guitar accompaniment, but something you might be able to enlighten us with, uh, Andrew, is the, the famous high note at the end, which was not there in the original version, was it? To the word schlafe in Himmlische Ruhe, um, which we all are so used to. Bum, 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 ba, dum, bum, bum. And it originally went da, 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 which is not half so exciting. Uh, yeah. Do you know when it got changed? I don't. No, but I have, uh, I've just, I was doing a little bit of homework uh, beforehand uh, and I've got a copy in front of me written out in his hand in 1860, so quite a lot later, uh, which does have that note in it. So some, at some point during the previous <laughs> 40 years. Well, I'm maybe David Wilcox spoke to him, him, but, but he yeah. actually, uh, you know, yeah. believed that uh, what he'd written was wrong. And of course, it was probably right. meant to go considerably faster than we usually sing it today. I mean, it was a sort of lilting 680 Barcarolle kind of thing. Um, cha, cha, um, cha, cha, um, cha, cha. Um, and it's not done like that now. It's become slower and more reverent. Like an Austrian Lendler, maybe. A Lendler, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's very much rooted in folk tradition Indeed. of that period. And actually, the guitar was an instrument that Franz Schubert wrote for and was very popular at the time. And yeah. so yeah. I can yeah. believe yeah. that the original accompaniment might well have been for guitar. And it was just a kind of kind of thing, um, which is, yeah. again, not how we usually hear it now. Indeed. And of course, many carols, the, the, the mood that we associate them with now has changed utterly from their originals. Um, I think, you know, the um, uh, Hark the Herald Angel Sing, you know, which we now think of as a rather grand uh, choral symphony with sort of descants and brass and so on. Um, you know, that, that tune, uh, you know, was originally from a Mendelssohn cantata to completely different words. And, um, uh, you know, O Come All Ye Faithful, originally a rather sort of light dance-like tune in three beats in the bar with a little hemiola at the end, like a sort of little French Baroque minuet. The character of that tune has changed utterly over its progress through the English carol tradition. And why not? You know, nothing wrong with that. Living music. Um, Andrew, do you have that manuscript on your computer in front of you? I don't suppose you could share your screen. I I'd love to see it. There we go. Wicked. Yeah. Oh, wow. Isn't that wonderful? So John was talking about this note here, I think. Mm -hmm. Yes. There it is. Yeah, and here's the accompaniment, just as John was describing it. Um, cha, cha, dee, 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 dum, and he says moderato. So he, he doesn't actually want it all slow and reverent, but thus it is generally performed. Mm -hmm. 